it is an honor to have this man of God with us tonight. Um, I admire him and the stand he has taken over the years. I admire what he stands for today. And I believe you're going to be very blessed by his ministry. And it is an honor to have me and Lee have talked. It's an honor to have him in our home. And um, I will say more at the end. But it is an honor to have Army Chaplain Doug Hawkins with us. I'm going to turn it over to him. Amen. Aren't you glad for Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. I know uh, our first nights in revival are always kind of watch night. But, uh, and that's okay if you want to do that, but I'm here to have church. Uh, I love that song it says. That, that was all with her. <laughs> well, I thought number one will always be me. Well, I thought I could be <laughs> Just what I wanted to be. Well, I thought I could build on a life yeah. Yeah. and sand, <laughs> but I found I can't on, even walk yep. with any hold in my hand. Yeah. I can't even walk. Without him holding my hand, mountains still high, and the valleys still are dead on my knees. That's where I learned to stand. Oh, I can't. I can't even walk oh, yeah. with any holding to my hand. Well, I thought I could do a lot on my own. Well, I thought, thought I could make it. There was a time I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I found I can't even walk without him holding my head. Oh, I can't even walk without him I 
can walk without it holding to my hand. Appreciate the honor and privilege to be here tonight. And I enjoyed that harmony. That said that you had done that in a while. Not in a long time. Well, we need you back to do it again. <laughs> Amen. It's a great pleasure and honor. As most of you know, I'm stationed at Fort Drama, New York. And I'm doing what I've done for since uh, 1984. I was called to preach. And and I went uh, full time into the ministry in uh, 1987. And although I don't need that mic, I'm going to use it a little bit because by the end of this week, I may wish that I have. And besides, you think I'm leaving Sunday, but I don't have to be anywhere until the 8th. And so if God gets to moving, I'm willing to stay. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'll just make that very plain. And uh, so, but. Uh, I want us to be obedient to the Lord. And I thank God for the honor uh, to pre preach the word of God, realizing that the scripture says that the grass withereth uh -huh. and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God yeah. shall, uh -huh. shall stand forever. Amen. And I'm trusting that the word will be exalted and more importantly, that individuals will experientially encounter the Lord Jesus Christ in the next few nights. Now, I had something that I was going to do, and uh, that's not what we're going to do tonight. We're doing something else, and uh, that's to prepare our hearts. And I want us to go uh, to the book of 1 Samuel, the third chapter, and let's begin there. I want to preach a thought by the help of the Lord. Uh, the return of El Bethel, and since it's just us, I'm going to take the time. And uh, I used to say that, but uh, I end up speaking, uh, reading. But uh, we'll see. First Samuel, the third chapter, uh, starting with the first verse. First Samuel, chapter 3. Look at First Samuel, chapter 3, starting with the first verse. And the word of the Lord reads like this. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days and there was no open vision and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place that his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see and there the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep and the Lord called Samuel and he answered here am I mm -hmm. Verse 1, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days, and there was no open vision. Father, I'm asking you right now, Lord, one more time, that you'll anoint my lips. Let me be your oracle. Oh God, I'm asking you, Lord, that the word would be like a hammer, that breaks in pieces the rock. Hallelujah. But I'm believing that you know what each of us needs Hallelujah. in this place. Yes. Yes. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that you'd reach down and touch. Yes, Lord. Oh, Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Touch every heart I ask in your name, Jesus. Yes. Amen. And amen. First Samuel, the third chapter, verses one through four shows an interesting condition to me. It's a condition of apathy mm -hmm. that is in the house. Now, now, this passage sets forth the calling of Samuel, but in doing so, it reveals some conditions that existed in that day. And uh, although it's not designed to be a sad passage, it is a sad commentary to the diminishing spiritual and experiential religion among the Jewish nation. The Bible says the word of the Lord was precious in those days. Now, when we look at the word precious, we think that's nice. When we say, oh, that's precious. What we mean is that's something that we value. 
But that's an old English term. And the Hebrew term there coincides with the old English usage. And what it says is that the word of the Lord was precious. It was precious because it was rare. In other words, though it was rare no longer, uh, was the word of the Lord being preached as it was in the days of old. And uh, no longer were the preachers filled with the Spirit on, to man. help guide the people. And no longer were the people dedicated in their worship. But a spirit of apathy existed uh -huh. among them. And, uh, and then it says there was no open vision. In other words, the revelatory encounters of with God was a past experience. And uh, in other words, this condition was abnormal when you think about a people that was so blessed by the presence of God. Now, now think about this. And you, you, you can bear with me for a minute and we'll preach here in just a little bit when I feel the Lord moving. And, uh, and uh, my hope's coming. Amen. And uh, listen, we're talking about a people that had watched the hand of God deliver them right out of Egyptian bondage and, and passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. We're talking about a people that was led in the wilderness by God who appeared uh, by, and a cloud by day and, and a pillar of fire by night. But in Samuel's day, things were different. Those were just collective memories of the past. Amen. I mean, they were uh, uh, memories of days gone by. Praise God. And what they had left was just a shell, just the form, just the liturgy. Amen. I mean, they still had the priesthood. That's true. And they still had the tabernacle. That's true. And they still offered sacrifice. That's true. Amen. They still had the singing. That's true. And they still had the preaching. That's true. And they still had the ark of God, the symbol of God's power and His presence. Yet what was missing among them was the most important thing, and that is the God of the ark. Come on now. I mean, they still had everything else except one thing. The God of the ark was no longer with them. Come on now. Well, praise God. Uh, they became apathetic, amen, and content with the form, uh, but with no substance. And they lacked the very thing that made them unique, amen. And that is the experiential presence of Almighty God confirming that He was their God and He on, was now. their King. Come on, come on. Come on now. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a people that knew their God. Yeah. My God. Uh huh. That at one time had 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 was so close to God that you know the you know the story the book of Numbers where old Balaam you know he prayed and he asked uh, he was hired to curse Israel and so he being like a good prophet he went up and he prayed and asked the Lord can I curse them and God said no you can't touch them uh, they're my people and he came back down and said God said no. I can't do it, Amen. There are blessed people, and, and you know, you know what, you know what he did. Oh, King Balak reached into the wallet, huh? And he said, uh, "Yeah, I'll up the alley a little bit." And he he gave him a little money, and you know what the prophet did? He said, "Hmm, maybe I should pray again." <laughs> yeah, and he said, "I'll pray again," and, and he prayed again. And what happened? Well, what happened was God said, "Go, Amen." A amen. Say, I thought you said God said no. But yeah, he did. Amen. But now you're telling us he said go? That's exactly right. Uh, you, listen, I, I don't have to I don't have to ask God if I can do something that's already clearly uh, stated in his word. Now come on now. I mean I don't need to pray about Amen. I, I don't I don't need to pray and say, Hey Lord, uh, do you care if I go down to the meth lab? Come on now, and get a methamphetamine. No, no, I don't have to pray that, huh? And I'm liable to get what I want, amen. And that's exactly what he needs that Balaam was about to get. And we know what he did. The Bible says he saddled up his ass, and, and you, you know the story. Uh, the jackass saw an angel uh, standing in the way with a flaming sword, uh -huh. and, and it dropped down. Praise God, amen. In other words, the jackass was smarter than Balaam, amen. And uh, But listen, uh, Balaam still, even after that, he tries to curse his. Israel. The Bible says he climbed up on top of a mountain and he said, Israel, I bless you. Huh? And every time he cursed, a blessing came out of his mouth. And he tells the Come reason on. why. In Numbers 23, 22 and verse 23, he, he says that, the, that he hath beheld uh, no iniquity in Jacob, neither is there perverseness in Israel. He said, for the Lord their God is with them and the shout of the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The shout of the king. Yeah. Listen, if you want the presence and power of blessing, no devil in hell can stop you if you've got the shout of a king. Hallelujah. Come on, amongst us. Praise yes. God. And that's what we want this week yeah. is the shout of King Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Among oh, us. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And what about us? What about us? Apathy. 
seems to be the greatest difficulty that we face. Amen. It ain't worldliness. Worldliness is a symptom. Amen. Come on now. It's just symptomatic of something deeper. It's apathy. You know what apathy is, right? Everybody know what apathy is? Nod your head like a chicken eating corn. If not, I'll define it for you. Apathy. Apathy means... Uh, Apathy it is like a nonchalant attitude. Oh, well, I'll go into the house. Oh, sure. We'll do the same thing over and over again. Uh, one or two songs and then uh, and that'll be it. Go through the form. That's apathy. Amen. And uh, if there was one thing to do, if you ask me what the biggest problem in our uh, and religion today is, and that's apathy. Praise God. Amen. Come in and want to hear something that makes you feel good. Amen. Amen. It's one. Of the, what a contrast uh, with the early church. The early church was ablaze with the fire of God. Amen. 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 I said it was ablaze Come with the fire Amen. of God. Uh, all yeah. you have to do is read. If you read the book of Acts and you start in the second chapter, verse 1, you see, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were gathered together in one accord and in one place. And, and suddenly, praise God, isn't that great? And suddenly, amen, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them twelve tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they uh, and they A-double-L were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues yeah. and the Spirit of God. We serve that same God today. Amen. A God that can move some praise God. Well, you saw what happened. All you have to do is read it. And then Peter got up. Uh, they, they had some uh, onlookers that were uh, making fun. And, and Peter said, these aren't drunk as you would suppose. And he preached the first gospel message. And when he preached, listen, after he got done preaching, people weren't in the floor laughing. Come on. Come on. No, no. Acts 2.37 says they were pricked in their heart. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. They were pricked in their heart. Now, if I smile and do like this the whole service, you won't be pricked in your heart. No, no. You'll say, boy, he's a good motivational speaker, but that's not what I am. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a, uh, I, I, I'm a, I'm a God called. Amen. I said something to about chaplains. I said some are called, some are sent, some just packed their bags and went. But I'm called of God. Amen. Amen. And, and gospel preaching has that effect. The Bible says in Acts 2.37, and they were pricked in their hearts. And they uh -huh. cried out to Peter and the rest of the apostles. That oh. means Matthew, by the way. Amen. Uh, Matthew was standing there, and, and, and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now, now that's the question. What shall we do? And, and, and you know what, Peter? Peter didn't answer like some of them answer today. Some of them say, you say, what shall I do? And, and they'll say, nothing. It was all done in Calvary. My Come on now. Is that how Peter said it? No, no I, I had somebody. I had a chaplain. He was preaching, and he, he was preaching on the uh, uh, on the uh, on the thief on the cross. And uh, bless his heart, he, he he said, "Well, now Jesus didn't have to take him down and and, and get him baptized." That's true. He, he didn't. Amen. He said, "We're we're saved by grace plus nothing minus nothing." You ever heard that trash? Amen. That's what it is. Listen, listen. Let me tell you what the Bible says. It, it, saved by grace plus nothing minus nothing. I went up to him afterwards and I know what he was and I said uh, I said sir I said I'm a little confused I was raised Baptist and I said we were always told you had to repent and he said well of course you have to repent and then I said well so it, you mean it's grace plus repentance right. <laughs> we are saved by grace amen. amen through faith that's true uh, but we all must repent in fact Jesus said if you don't repent you'll all likewise perish amen, amen. 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 That's what it says. Amen. Anyway, somebody says, just believe. Well, it's true. You've got to believe. But a believer will be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Come on now. It's not talking about mental assent. I mean, my goodness, I could go to the gutter over here and ask the drunk, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? He'll say, sure I do. And you know, but he's not saying the devil believes for crying out loud. James says, you believe in one God? Mom. You believe in one God? Amen. You're doing well. 
Uh -huh. Some of them ain't even there yet. Amen. Uh, he said, if you believe in one God, you're doing good. Amen. He said, the devil believes. Praise God. Uh -huh. But is the devil saved? Well, of course not. We, we have sense enough to know that he's not saved. In other words, it takes more than a mental assent uh, to be saved. Amen. Amen. And Peter knew that. That's why he said in Acts 2.37, uh, when in brethren, what shall we do? And he answered. He said, repent. Amen. And, but he didn't put on the brakes. That's what some folk do. He didn't put on the brakes. He said, repent. And be baptized, some of you. Is that what he said? All of you. Every one of you. Amen. amen. That means you. Amen. That means me. Amen. Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we still have the preachers. Amen. We still sing and we still have service. We still have a form. We still have the house. But what we need in this hour is the God of the house. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Can God still do it? Yes, sir. 3,000 3, were obedient that day. Amen. Uh, can God still do it? Yes, sir. Sure he can. Amen. I believe yes. that. Absolutely. Where can he do it? Right here in Fremont. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Listen, Amen. you can read it over and over and over again all through. It'll keep saying the same thing. Amen. Come on. Uh -huh. Praise God. And it still says every one of you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Talk about me. Amen. Amen. Every one of me. Amen. Every one of you. Amen. The laugh has not gone out. Amen. And the air of the laugh of God went out to the temple, but it's not gone out today. Uh, God's just waiting for somebody like Samuel to say, here am I. Hallelujah. Here am I. Hallelujah. We need a fresh inbreaking of the kingdom of God in our midst. And when this happens, folks will be converted. Praise God. Amen. There'll be healing. Praise God. There'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. It can happen, I'm saying. Yeah. God has not changed. Yeah. We've simply been apathetic to the moving of God. It has become a legend, a collective third and fourth generation memory. You see, a personal experience can break this generational cycle, though. Come on. I Come on, Amen. Come on. I mean, yeah. think about Come on, it. Think about it. Abraham had a revelatory. Just, just hold with me just for another hour or two. Uh, Abraham had a revelatory experience with God. Amen. He met God. He knew God. Amen. God, Amen. God spoke to him. Uh huh. And, and, and he communicated this to Isaac. But if you study Isaac, he lacked what his daddy. He lacked the same closeness that his daddy had. Amen. Why? Because this thing can't be taught. I can't teach you an experience with God. Uh, amen. amen. I, it has to be caught. Amen. Praise amen. God. Yes, indeed. Uh, amen. 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 Not taught, but God. Well, uh, I'm talking about experience. Amen. amen. And so, so, so Isaac didn't have his foot. And then, my goodness, Jacob, he's all messed up. He was a supplanter. You know him. Amen. And, uh, and a deceiver. He knew the stories about God. He knew about God and his religion, but only a form. Yeah, he had no experiential knowledge. Amen. Uh, amen. And he stole his brother's birthright and his blessing. And then in military terms, he cut sling load. Means he got out of there. Amen. He got out of there fast. Amen. And uh, by the way, we're, we have some uh, Jacobs in here. Amen. And uh, you know what you were taught. Praise God. Amen. A amen. Uh, but like the genuine. Well, praise God. I met somebody the other day and my wife said, well, we really like her. She attends our, uh, I'm pastor, you know, in the, uh, I'm senior pastor of the gospel service there at Fort Drum. And she attends. And she's a great lady. But my my wife looked at me and she said, uh, she knows more than she lives. Amen. And there's a lot of folk like that. They they know more than what they live. But what I'm trying to tell you is we need to live what we know. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. I mean, what is this thing? It's a journey with God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I want to walk with him. Praise the Lord. And uh, listen, and though Jacob was running, and you know what happened? He ran over in Genesis 28. And he laid down and he had a vision. You know the story. He laid down and he saw a ladder. And it reached the top of heaven. Praise God. Yahweh. The Bible says. Anytime you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in your Bibles. If you read the KJV. Uh, that means Yahweh. And uh, all caps. That's what the translators have done for us. They put all caps to let you know that's the name of God. We'll talk about that maybe later this week. But uh, uh, he said Yahweh the Lord was standing on top of the ladder. 
and the ladder reached from heaven to earth. And angels were ascending and descending uh, on the ladder. And I'll give you just a little, uh, a little something here. It was a revelation that he had. That this is the house of God. What made him say that? Because he had a revelation of Yahweh on top of the ladder. And what's the ladder? Well, I got news for you. We don't see the ladder until the New Testament. And the ladder, how the ladder in the New Testament is Jesus Christ. Amen. He, he's the one. Amen. He's the man that connects earth uh, to heaven. Amen. In other words, Yahweh, amen, and humanity are brought together in the person and name of Jesus Christ. Now, how do I know that's so? Because one day I heard Jesus tell me. Daniel. He said, are you amazed? Because I said I saw you by the big tree. He said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. He said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Hereafter, you shall see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Why? Because uh, He is the ladder of oh, yeah. God. He's Yahweh manifest in human flesh. Praise God. God. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, and, and manifest. Well, listen, for 28 years, uh, I'll get off preach something else here in a minute. But um, God, God, for 28 years, Jacob, he got up from that experience. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I had a great experience. And he lived on that experience for 28 years. For 28 years, he didn't return there. He just talked about it. I wonder how many of us are like that. I mean, if I ask you how you know you're saved, what will you do? You'll pull up the trophy. You know, the trophy of 20 years ago. Dust it off a little bit. Say, here, I got it. And now that's not how you know. How, how do I know? I know because I'm still walking with a God. Hallelujah. I, I have a right now God. Amen. And a right now relationship with that God. Hallelujah. He walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. Hallelujah. When, when? Not back then. Just back then. But not just back then. Praise God. But right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> you, you, you might as well admit it. Have you ever oh, yeah. met somebody? You just knew they was going to tell you the same story. Oh, they told. I mean, and the first 20 times it was good. But after a while, it ain't the same. <laughs> Amen. And they're still living in the past. I can just imagine them around the fire. And, and, and old Jacob saying, yeah, uh, I can remember traveling. And, and one day I laid down and all the kids said, and you had a vision. And in the vision you saw a ladder. You know, they were just repeating, amen. Huh? But he lacked an experience right now. But thank God he dug in there. Amen. Amen. What about us? Do we relish in the past? What about now? Our past is wonderful. I, I'm not, listen, but there is no substitute for a fresh, dynamic experience with the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hey, Jacob, Jacob would find this out. He was about to meet his death at the hands of his brother. Amen. In Genesis 32 and 24 was one of the greatest verses. It says, Jacob got alone, and there he wrestled with a man. Amen. It, J Jacob realized his religion was okay for living, but not for dying. He had to have an experience. Amen. Amen. I mean, it was one thing to have a vision and say, wow, this is the, <laughs> the house of God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But he needed an experiential encounter. And he got it with a man. Who was this man? Hosea said it was an angel. Christ was an angel. Although the overarching theme is expressed by Jacob as a meeting with God. Amen. Get Jacob's experiential encounter. You know the story. He wrestled with an angel. He said, what's your name? And the angel said, I, you know, you don't need to know my name. And you, you know the story. And, and, uh, and he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Uh -huh. And the angel reached out and touched his thigh. And his thigh was out of joint. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Come on. Jacob's experiential encounter did something to him. He wrestled. He wrestled. And it produced a change. What kind of a change? An inward change and an outward change. I said it was an inward change and it was an outward change. How do I know there was an outward change? Because the Bible says he halted on his thigh. For the rest of his life, Jacob. Hallelujah. 
Jacob halted on his side and for the rest of his life he bore the mark of this wrestling match amen that which separates the form from the substance hear what I'm saying hear what I'm saying tonight he bore the mark you see we can know about God we can be experts in the field of knowledge amen come on man. Come amen on. yeah we can know about God come on come on experts you know what an expert is, right? X is a has been, spurt is a grip under pressure. <laughs> Let's think on that. Chew on that one. Amen. Amen. Experts in the field of knowledge. We, we, we can know about the house of God and we can attend service every week and we should. Amen. 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 Say, so, I don't need to do that. Somebody told me that. <laughs> so, somebody, I had a soldier, you know, uh, he said, well, well I, I, I don't, I, need to I don't need to attend church to, 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 to be a Christian I said that's true I said I, I said after all that Bible says that and Jesus said I, I'll, I'll build my church and you can go if you want that what he said he said well I guess he said that. right he didn't say that and I know that I know that Paul said uh, uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together I said you know as the manner of Sunday is I said you know like you huh and uh, 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 but so much more as you see the day approaching amen amen uh, amen say, say you're a rough chaplain well I always tell them I'm the chaplain their mama warned them about amen <laughs> and uh, listen when we have an experiential encounter with the God of heaven we will be marked Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. You Come see, on. Jacob's lip, Jacob's lip is a testimony that when you really encounter God, Come you'll on. never, ever, ever walk the same. Hallelujah. Oh, I want a real encounter with God. Oh, yeah. Touch something yeah. on the inside. Oh, yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. to the outside. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 Come on, man. Oh, real yeah. change, praise yeah. God. Yeah. Hallelujah! Lord. Don't walk the same. You know, I got a chaplain. Well, they're watching, and uh, I don't want. To, they're watching. There's a real change, real change. Yeah. yeah. I, I was talking to two individuals, one of which was a chaplain, and the individual said, uh, "said You know, well, we know it. We all are. We're all sinning, and uh, you know, when you get mad and you cuss and." And all and then and the chaplain said, Yeah, that's that's true. And I I said, Well some of us don't believe that. I said, Some of us believe there's real change in salvation. Amen. 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 I said, I've been married for twenty six years and my wife ain't never heard me cuss. Amen. 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 Does that make me perfect? No. But it does show one thing. I believe in real salvation. Amen. Amen. Experiential. A work that Amen. God does inside. Hallelujah. But it doesn't just remain yeah. inside. There's something that permeates to the outside. Yeah, like a sir. sponge. Amen. Yes, yeah. You get a sponge yeah. wet in it. It just gets wet on the inside. It comes out on the outside. Hallelujah. Yeah. And a real yeah. encounter with God does yes. something to us. Yes, hey, yes it God. does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what did Jacob do after he got this encounter? What did he do? Well, he went home and he and he turned on and he watched the TV preachers. Is that what he did? <laughs> well, did they have TV today? So he, he went down and he got a hold of the Babylonian Gazette, amen. And and he and he read that. No, he didn't do that. After he had this experiential encounter, what did he do? The Bible says he went back to Bethel. He, he went back to the house of God. Amen. He, he went back to the house of God. But there's something that changed. There's something that changed. Bethel means house of God. And that's what he called the place. Bethel. Bethel. The house of God. But when he returns this time, he didn't call it that. He built an altar and he called it El Bethel. Ah. Which means the God. Of the house of God. In other words, it was not enough for him to know about the house of God. Amen. Wasn't enough. He had to know the God of the house. And may I say yes. this? Come this on, week we can know the God of the house of God. And when, we, and when we 
get the God of the house of God moving in this place? Uh, amen. You won't need advertising because listen, uh, amen. God will do the advertising. Hallelujah. And I, I hope that you go out and, and listen. I've always said this. If you get enough fire in the pulpit, people will come out just to watch you burn. Amen. And I intend there to be fire in the pulpit. Hallelujah. But not just here. I yeah. want to sweep out there. Hallelujah. And for us to come out and experience with God Almighty. Rise. My God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Amen. Amen. We rise Woo, to walk in newness yeah. of life. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, the resurrection power is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How do you obey the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? Repent and be baptized. And Amen. receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, Come on. Repent and be baptized. Amen. Everyone, you. Same thing. Amen. Some need to say, wait a minute. I've already got the Holy Ghost. That's wonderful. I'm glad so did Cornelius. Cornelius was filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 10. But then what did he do? Well, he, we had to hit the water. Amen. Well, he's not optional. Amen. Come on. Listen, friend. And that's what I had to do. I had the Holy Ghost for years. But guess what? I wanted to be obedient. Sheep are obedient. Amen. Sheep. I can always tell when I'm dealing with a sheep. Because they'll say, you show them the word of God. And they'll say, oh yeah, I like that. Sheep, sheep like good sheep food. Amen. And I can tell when I've dealt with a goat. They'll say, yeah, but... Because the goat, yeah, come on now. Because the goats always have a button program. Praise God. Don't turn your back on a goat. Amen. It's got a button program. And I can always tell when I'm dealing with a spiritual goat. Amen. Oh yes. Yeah, oh, but. Man. Amen. Let's not. Let's not. Yeah, but. Let's. Let's believe the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I wonder if you'll join me. Hallelujah. And ask God. Say, Lord, I'll do what you want. Yes. May not be. May not be what I want. But Lord, I'll, 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 I'll do what you want me to do. Hallelujah. And we can see revival in this place. Oh, yes, Let's walk can. out of here, hallelujah, with an experiential encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to say that course again. Hallelujah. Let's seek him for just a moment. Hallelujah. I can't even walk without him holding. Oh, yes. Come on now. Hallelujah.
Whatever you need, it is here. This altar is open. Hallelujah. If you would like to be prayed for, we will pray for you as well. Whatever you desire of the Lord, you can meet the God of the house. I just don't want to be in the house. I want to know the God of the house. Hallelujah. We like to be good church. We like to come to church to be part of a good group of people. But I want to know the God of the house. Yes. And you can know him today. Yes. You can experience him today. Yes.